even though chili plants are tropical, they do grow in this country perfectly well. The only thing is you do have to be quite patient with them. This variety is a habanero. Specifically, it's a Caribbean red hot, and it's already dropping. But it takes a good nine months to ripen these ones. Some of the less hot ones take less time. Now, what people misunderstand about chilies is that they think that they're annuals, that they die after their first growing year. It's not true. These are perennials. Any good plant can last four or five years. The problem that happens is during the first winter, because they're a tropical plant, they're used to high light levels. In winter, light levels drop, the plant struggles to get its energy, basically it looks ill, like most of us do in the, sun, in the winter. Um, all people have to do is just have to be a bit patient with it, get it through the winter, in the spring, especially in the second year, what happens is they then come straight back to life in the spring, they bush out, and as soon as it's warm enough, they'll start flowering and fruiting. And the second year, they crop all summer. This is our Trinidad scorpion plant. It's four years old and it's been grown in Maudsley and Lancashire in our demonstration greenhouse. It's um, a very rare plant and it doesn't usually grow this tall. So it's um, deemed as hot as the Dorset Naga, which is one of the hottest plants. This chilli plant is a very hot one indeed. It's called Naga Jolakia. Now the Naga originates from North India. This would regularly top a million Scovilles, which is the unit used for measuring the heat. As an example, comparison, this is a jalapeno. Now these are about three to 5,000 Scovilles. This, one million. Okay, what I'll do is I'll have a go with this scotch bonnet. It looks, so is this hot? Is this hot? Pretty hot. Is it, yeah, let's give it a go. Mm. It's really sweet. I know I even feel the heat. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> it's really, really good. Yeah. Once you try a chili, the heat of the chili releases a bit of a pain. So then in your brain it releases endorphins, which becomes a bit addictive. And then the more chilies you have, the more kick you're looking for. You're looking for the hotter chilli so you can get more of a kick. And that's what most of the people who are coming to these fairs are looking for. They're searching for that kick of the hottest chilli possible. Basically, they're addicts, chilli addicts. I'm nervous, but um, I'm like really desperate to win, really. I just, I just love the heat and the feeling and all that when you shake. I just love it all, so I just got it in me. I just want to go and do it. Like I eat chilies, I've been practicing all week with silly chilies and trying to not drink and things like that. Just really want to go for it, prove I can do it. This is quite a good way to get your five a day, ladies and gentlemen. Although, how long your body decides to keep it is entirely up to you. Such a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say to the competitors, if you feel you can't go on, stop. I wait no. Give a round of applause. <laughs> We're now gonna have most probably the hottest chili on the planet. <laughs> the chocolate Jolakia Naga. And these will top 1,080,000 Scovilles. People, people at the front, can you actually smell the chili? Come a bit closer. You can, you can smell it from there, can't you? Yeah, I'm gonna end, mate. Yeah, sure. All right, I'm gonna finish. Okay, mate. Do you want to go? Okay, cheers.